So the first process I want to talk about on generating alphas inside of ZBrush is using the MRGBZ grabber. And this is going to allow us to generate alphas quickly without going to another program. So before we get into that, here I just have my model loaded into ZBrush here. I've gone through and used those trim and clip brushes, also using the H polish sculpting, and um, some various other masking and transpose things to kind of pull out the shape. And then as you can see here, I've created simple primitives and using Shadowbox and some of the other initialized properties inside of ZBrush to generate some other shapes to kind of embed into my object. So once I reach a point about like this with my model, I actually come through with simple alphas, so like this shape over here, and I'll just start dragging these onto the surface of my model to kind of describe a little bit more form. So using these kind of alphas that are very simplistic, you can come across and using a positive or negative stroke, add a little more details to the surface as you work. So before we can start using these alphas, we actually have to create them. And this can be done entirely inside of ZBrush using the powerful 2.5D system. So if I come over here and look at this alpha over here, it was generated with very simple primitives inside of ZBrush without having to go to another program. So to generate this quick, I'm going to come over here to this tool palette, and I'm just going to click on my model I've selected, and I'm going to find the Sphere 3D object and just load that guy in. Then I come down here to that initialize tab again, the one we were using when we were actually generating our Greeble objects. And I'm just going to change this coverage to 180. So just come over here and type that value in. And now I've got this nice kind of hemisphere object. So once I have this kind of generated, I can increase my divide a little bit more. So I'm going to go 256 and 128. Just kind of smooth it out some. And then I'm going to come up here and click Make Polymesh 3D. So now I have a polymesh object of this sphere. So now if I come over to the Subtool tab over here and open that up, and then come down to Append, and just append in a cube 3D object. I'm just going to load that object right in. So now you can see my Subtool palette has actually two tools in it. So I have my initial polymesh 3D sphere, and then that actual cube. So we come down and turn on transparency. You can see that I have that sphere is sitting right inside that cube there. So I'm now going to come to my rotate transpose line and drag a line out right out of the surface holding shift. And then at the end, I'm going to grab the inner circle there and start rotating. And then as I'm rotating, I'm going to hold shift to lock it into that horizontal plane. Now I'm going to switch to the move transpose line and then just kind of move this out. So it's kind of embedded partially into the surface of that cube. So just moving it out a little bit more just to get that little kind of indent shape there. And you can move this out as much as you want. This is going to give you the kind of depth that you have on that actual uh, hemisphere there that's going to embed into this cube. So the more depth you want, you can just change this by just moving this uh, sphere in and out of the object there with just using your transpose line. So I'm going to do one more rotation on this since we're going to be using this to generate an alpha. Right now I have an extremely kind of perpendicular uh, line right here where the actual sphere is intersecting these, uh, the cube here. So I'm just going to take this and just rotate this a little bit like so just so I get a little bit of angle or a little bit of lip right there. So if we think about how this alpha is going to be generated, it's going to be generated this top kind of down uh, quality and so if this line right here this very solid line on the bottom right here is too harsh it could possibly generate kind of some stair stepping on your model when it's applied as an alpha so if you just come through and kind of lessen the uh, kind of harshness of that actual depth being sunk into the uh, square there it'll give me a nice kind of smooth transition to use that alpha with so just rotating that hemisphere just a tiny bit to give it a little bit of angle on that side there so now that I have that um, where it needs to go, like this, I just need to do a Dynamesh subtract process on the model now to uh, get it to actually subtract the actual hemisphere from the actual cube 3D. So I'm going to come over to the Subtool palette over here, and I first need to kind of order these guys correctly to use that Dynamesh subtract functionality. So I'm going to take this sphere and then come down to Move Down and just move it down to the bottom there. And then I'm going to set this uh, Half Moon as uh, Subtract. This is going to tell this Dynamesh process that we talked about earlier to subtract this object from that cube. After I have that set, I'm going to go back up to my cube 3D object here. I'm going to come down to the Geometry tab, and I'm just going to turn this quickly into a Dynamesh. So opening up Dynamesh, I'm going to set my resolution to say something around 512, 
I'm going to turn off blur and I'm just going to dynamesh that object right there. So now this cube object is a dynamesh object. So now I can come back up to my subtool palette here. And now I just need to merge this cube into the actual sphere and then redynamesh to get that subtract process to work. So just make sure I still have that cube. I'm going to come down here to the merge option on the subtool and do merge down. It's going to tell you it's not an undoable operation, so just hit OK. And now with those joined together, I'm just going to hold control and clear my mask to redynamesh and it should now subtract this sphere out of the cube. So we have that shape subtracted out. Now I do have a little bit of kind of uh, jaggies around the edges here, so I'm just gonna use uh, the smooth brush to kind of smooth these out. So just holding shift and just coming through and smoothing that area. I'm just coming through and hitting all these areas in here. Anything you have that you can kind of quickly smooth out um, is generally a good idea to do because all these little details um, will be picked up on the actual alpha. So just coming through and kind of doing a little cleanup on the surface of your model there. Now the next thing I want to do is actually take this and kind of frame it pretty large on your canvas because the actual size of this object based on your canvas space is going to determine how large the alpha actually is when we generate it with this mRGBZ grabber. So it's going to make it you know, pretty big on my canvas here. So now we need to generate the alpha out of this shape. So I'm going to come up here to the tool palette again. I'm just going to click on my cube 3D object. And when you open this up, you're going to notice that underneath this uh, 3D meshes, there's a whole bunch of these 2.5D brushes. And this is where that mRGBZ grabber uh, lives. So I'm just come over there and click that. You're going to get this little warning that's going to pop up, and it's just telling you that it's going to take your model out of edit transform mode, basically turning it into a 2.5D uh, pixel image. So we're just going to hit switch. And so now you can see that edit mode is deactivated. That little white box that surrounds the actual canvas is gone, and I can no longer rotate my model. So don't worry, uh, your model's still okay. It's over here underneath the tool palette, it's just living over here. It just basically took the object and just flatten it down to 2.5D so we can actually start using this MRGB Z grabber to grab the data from the canvas. So to use this, first we're just going to come over to our object and kind of click and drag in the center of it. And as you're dragging out, you're going to notice it's going to get this white kind of box generated. If you hold shift while you're dragging, it's actually going to frame it to a square. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that that detail we're trying to capture as an alpha is inside of this box. So after you roughly have it uh, where you want it, you're just going to release. And you're going to notice it's actually going to generate a alpha from the depth and then a corresponding RGB texture. So now that we have this alpha, um, you'll notice that it's actually inverted of what we really want, so we actually need to flip it. So I'm just going to make sure that alpha is the one that's active, coming up to the alpha tab here, and then just do this invert. So now we have this alpha that was created entirely inside of ZBrush. So using the 2.5D canvas and then the MRGB Z grabber, we grabbed the data and turned it into an alpha. And now we can just start applying it to our model. So if I come over here and just select our helmet uh, tool again, and then I'm going to hit Control N on my canvas to just clear out that 2.5D data. I'm also going to double check the top bar here just to make sure that mRGB is turned on and my Z intensity is set to 100. When you start using some of these uh, 2.5D brushes, it turns some of these things off. So when we do this draw step of the model back on our canvas, you just want to make sure that both these things are on and set to 100 intensity. So I'm just going to draw my model out now. There it comes. And then just hit T to get back into that edit mode. And now I'm going to come up to the standard brush and I'm going to change the stroke to drag rectangle. And then I'm going to go to that alpha tab and pick that alpha we just created. Now with those two objects in place, I'm just going to find a spot on my model here. Just grab this guy here. Just rotate in position and turn off uh, symmetry. 
and now I'm just going to drag that out and you're going to notice that alpha is going to get drawn on the surface. Now the intensity on this alpha is a little bit low so I'm going to come up here and just up the intensity of well so I'm going to do it probably around 30 and then drag that out again and you can start to see how you can get those shapes kind of generated now. So increasing this intensity is going to increase how much depth that alpha is going to get to so you can get shapes like this and then if you want to do the inverted option, uh, you just hold Alt when you drag it out, and you'll end up getting an inverted variety of it. So now you can see how powerful this really is. So using the 2.5D canvas, along with the MRGB Z Grabber, you can generate alphas entirely inside a ZBrush and then apply them directly to your model. Now if you're happy with this alpha, you can save it as well. So just coming up to the Alpha tab here and clicking on Export, this is going to allow you to save it as a PSD file of that actual alpha and then if you want to import it back in you can import it back in to use on any model you create inside of ZBrush. So we're going to continue on making a few more alphas to kind of detail this helmet out a little bit further as we continue uh, working on building a helmet inside of ZBrush.